Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Diligent Engine, because Diligent Engine just got a new release, and this is something I've never talked about on this channel before. So what exactly is Diligent Engine? Well, it's a bit misleading in the name. This is not a game engine. In fact, it's a cross-platform rendering framework. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because there are a couple of other ones out there. In some ways, SDL and SFML are that, uh, but one of the most popular ones you've seen lately is BGFX. In fact, I did a video or and a uh, post about cross-platform OpenGL alternatives, and this is where these frameworks come in. What they do is they abstract the underlying renderer away. So instead of having to deal with OpenGL or Vulkan or Metal or whatever on the, the back end, you actually use this higher level framework that sits on top of it. And the reason why this is so valuable is, well, recently Mac kind of screwed over all of OpenGL, basically is deprecating support and they don't support Vulkan. So you need to have some kind of an abstraction layer to get around that. And in this list, I did not cover the Diligent Engine, uh, but I did cover other ones such as BGFX, Ka slash Core, Ogre, The Forge, and Veldred, and like I said, SDL kind of. Now, uh, Diligent Engine kind of fits into the same basic space, and the reason why I'm mentioning it today is because they just had this release. So 2.4 was just released earlier today, improved shader reflection, pipeline resource layouts, and more. Plus, they added Diligent Effects, a high-level renderer. So we're going to take a look at Diligent Engine uh, in uh, brief, and then I'm going to show you how to actually go about installing it. Now, if you're interested, this is an entirely open source project. It is ho hosted on GitHub. Uh, it is under the Apache 2 open source license, uh, where you're probably the top level. We'll, we'll use their explanation. So basically, this is from Diligent Graphics webpage. Uh, Diligent Graphics is a lightweight cross-platform graphics API abstraction layer. It is designed to take full advantage of Direct3D12, Vulkan, and Metal, while supporting older platforms such as Direct3D11, OpenGL, and OpenGL ES. Uh, the Diligent Engine exposes common front-end APIs and uses HLSL as a universal shading language on all platform and rendering backends. But there is a, a bytecode converter for GLSL, DX, and Spurv um, can be used with corresponding backends. The engine is intended to be used as a graphics subsystem in a game engine or any other 3D application. Full source code is available on GitHub, and like I said, it is distributed under the Apache 2 license. So that's kind of the whole thing behind this. It is for people creating game engines to use this kind of technology. So you don't really build your game using Diligent Engine. It's too low level for that. You build your game engine or if someone else builds their game engine and makes it available to you. For example, uh, the Armory game engine is built over top of the Ka framework. A number of game engines such as uh, they're not coming to me right now, but a number of them are built over top of the BGFX graphics library as well. So that's what this is. This is a layer of middleware that abstracts away the underlying renderer for game engines to build on top of. And the big things that they're approaching are cross-platform support with no like pound of uh, pound of fine pragma testing for different platforms, high performance, modular design, clear object-based interface, key graphic features including automatic shader resources binding to leverage next generation rendering APIs, uh, multi-threaded command generation, modern C++ features to make code fast and reliable. Now, one of the big questions you're going to probably ask is, well, why wouldn't I just use BGFX? And this is their answer, not mine, by the way. But what they say is BGFX is one of the most successful open source API abstraction libraries that have been around for years, so why Diligent? The answer is Diligent was designed from scratch to take advantage of next gen APIs. Diligent Engine relates to BGFX as Direct3D12 relates to Direct3D11 and Vulkan relates to OpenGL. Some of the advantages Diligent Engine offers are better abstraction, explicit control of resource state transitions, efficient shader, uh, resource binding model, multi-threaded command list recording, HLSL um, as a common shading language in all platforms and backends, and a Vulkan backend. And here are the graphics APIs that are currently supported. So on Windows Desktop, we have uh, Direct3D11, Direct3D12, NoteGL 4.2, and Vulkan. On the Universal Windows platform, we have Direct3D11 and 12. Linux, you have OpenGL 4.2 and Vulkan. Android, you have OpenGL... Uh, ES 3.0. On Mac OS, you have OpenGL 4.1 for now. They deprecated it. And then Vulkan via Molten VK. Now, Molten VK is a translation layer that transfers from Vulkan to Metal. And then iOS uh, via OpenGL ES 3. So you've got pretty good platform support here. You've got all the biggies in there at least. So now let's take a look at the process of getting and getting it up to run. Uh, so Diligent Engine isn't that hard to get going. It is CMake based. So you see here, it is available up on GitHub. I will make a link with all of the stuff available to you. So don't worry about the specifics. But what you are looking at here is the GitHub uh, repository. We want to go ahead and clone this guy. So let's get started with this. So let's fire up. Uh, at this point in time, you need to have two pieces of software installed on your machine. A new version, 3.13 or newer of CMake and Git. 
uh, you should probably have a Git client installed in some form anyway. So, uh, but do make sure you get the newest version of CMake or this will fail. So first off, we'll do the Git thing. Um, and let me do this via copy and paste. Now this is going to go ahead and get the entire uh, repository. Oops, doubled that up. And we want so want to make sure that you have that recursive in there so it gets all the dependencies as well. And go ahead and run that. Now there's quite a few things to actually go ahead and. Uh, I'm not going to say git because I'm making too many puns, but there are many things that it has to fetch here. So we will um, pause the video and return while this goes ahead and clones. So this could take, uh, actually my connection is pretty fast. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, that took less than a minute actually. So now that you've actually got all the code there, you want to go ahead and change into that directory. And now we're going to call CMake. Now what CMake does is makes project files for your compiler of choice. So it's going to, in my particular case, make us a Visual Studio project file. And the command you want to run is this one right here. So CMake dash H dot dash B dot forward slash CMake build. So we're basically doing it into this directory, and we want to use Visual Studio 2017 Win64 platform. Now, if you go to CMake's website, there are um, descriptors of all of the different platforms that are available, or you can run the GUI version of CMake and just choose this stuff from a list if you prefer. But you can just go ahead and run that. It's going to go ahead and basically build all of the, um, the project files we need. I'll give this a second to run, and I will be right back. Okay, so in theory, everything worked fine. There are no errors, and there is now a project file for you. Once again, we created everything in the CMK build file, so we're just going to go ahead and we'll change into that folder, and then we'll change into the Win64 folder, like so. And then you'll notice here there are a number of different files. Most specifically, we're interested in that solution file right there. Let's just go, go ahead and fire up uh, Visual Studio. Now, of course, if you don't have uh, Visual Studio installed, uh, you're going to want to build this for whatever platform was of choice for you, or you're going to want to go ahead and install Visual Studio 2017 right now. But we are now pretty much up and going. I'm going to show you guys a trick in a second too. If you have an Optimus video card like myself, one of those problems with running inside of Visual Studio is when it debugs your code, it won't necessarily fire up the Optimus um, version of it. So you'll be running on your integrated graphics card and it's going to run dog slow. I'm going to show you a way to force around that. So here we go. Um, it's doing its thing. It's parsing out all of the uh, the headers and such. And this could take a little bit of time. And I'm also going to have to do a build. Uh, we're, we're happy with the defaults for now. So what we're going to do right away is just do a build. And then we're going to do a build solution. Now, this is going to take a, a few minutes of time. So I'm going to let this just go ahead and run. And I will be right back. Okay, well, this is still building away. I decided we should take a quick walk through the source code here. So if you want to jump in and make sense of it, uh, when your project is open, it should look something like this. You don't care about the make targets here. Uh, but what you're probably most interested in is how to get up and running, which you'll find in the tutorial section here. They walk through basically, here is a simple straight out hello world uh, entry level file. So come in here, open this guy up, and I'll have all the dependencies resolved for you. But this is your entry level application. I'll, I'll run it in a second once this is up and going, but this will show you basically how to get up and started. And then you see the samples kind of start getting more and more complex as you go, uh, quads, render targets, and so on. And the cool thing is we've actually got some um, more advanced examples, such as an asteroid example down here. You can also integrate um, Diligent Engine directly into Unity. And there are some things to show you how to hook into a Unity scene as well, so your code can interact with the Unity's uh, rendering libraries. Uh, when you're interested in actually jumping into uh, Diligent Engine itself, just come on down here. What you're interested in mostly is core. And this is where the heart of the Diligent Engine actually is. You see all these different things here. So you got uh, graphics engines for all of the different platforms that are supported. Uh, you've got all their basic the platforms, the tools. You've got common functionality here, obviously in common. Pretty straightforward, pretty clean. So now that this is back, going, let's go back here. We'll say um, we'll set this as our startup project and give that a run. So here is the results of that hello world code we were going through just a second ago, and it is a. Uh, you know, shaded, uh, gradient shaded triangle on a surface. Nothing too impressive, but it is kind of where you start with these things. And it shows you how to do common rendering tasks. Almost all of the common rendering tasks you would need for like a base renderer, um, it, but in a platform abstracted way. So you don't need to deal with OpenGL or Direct3D or anything else like that. It, it's handled for you in the code base. Um, if you want to get into a slightly more advanced example, 
come back here and find the samples folder and the atmosphere sample is a good one to start with. So we'll go ahead, we'll set that as the startup project again. And I'm gonna show you that trick for if you have Optimus. So let's open up the uh, main file here. So atmosphere sample here. And just somewhere before the namespace, right here, well, all we gotta do is tell Visual Studio when it's building our code that we want it to um, build it with Optimus support. Just go ahead and paste this code in here. Now one of your problems, or I guess one of the advantages of the um, Diligent Engine is abstracting away platform specific stuff. So that means D word isn't defined, but a D word is frankly just a long. So we'll replace that out with this line of code in place. When you run this code, if you have an Optimus NVIDIA machine, it will now use the dedicated graphics. Now there is another way around this. You can actually, I believe, if you run Visual Studio, you right click and say run with graphics adapter, you will get the same result. But unfortunately, if you're on battery power, it also means that it's gonna be running Visual Studio using your GPU and it will be needlessly draining your, your processing. So you see here when we load the example, up, we have the choice of which backend we want it to use. So we can run this on DirectX 11, DirectX 12, OpenGL, or Vulkan. I'll go ahead with DirectX 12 in this particular case. And here you see it is just sort of a, a landscape demo. So this is as complex as you get. And you got a number of things here for controlling the lighting in the scene. So if you want to see a bit more of an example of the new diligent effects framework they've got here and what this guy is actually capable of, or just need some more advanced source code to build from, uh, this is a very good example to start with. And as you see, you've got a number of controls over how shadows are generated, smooth them out, number of cascades. We've got light scattering, advanced settings over here, tone mapping, and so on. It's not really about the example itself, just uh, kind of a, a showcase of what Diligent Engine is actually capable of. And really, that's about where I'm going to leave it. It's not something that I'm going to go into a whole lot of detail on because, quite frankly, it's one of those plumbing kind of tools like, like BGFX or whatever. Um, you're going to want to jump in there and get up to speed on it yourself, and I can't really show you that in this video, but I can show you where to look. So let's close this guy down. Now, first off, obviously, the place you're going to want to start if you want to get started with this is come in here, check out the various different tutorials. Do them pretty much in sequence. Uh, firing up this asteroids example is probably a good idea as well. Uh, on top of that, what you're going to want to do is head back over to the Diligence Graphics webpage, go to Diligent Engine, and then using the API. So you don't need to go through the getting started. That's the installation process. We've already covered that in this video. Unless you're on Mac or Linux or whatever, you need help getting started. That will get you going. That's all about uh, installing and building. Here, this is about using the API, and it kind of walks you through the minimum of setting it up so you have access to OpenGL, Drex 3D11, 12, or Vulkan devices, and that's exactly what this particular snippet of code does. And this would be where you would start. This, in addition to the tutorials, should get you up and running. And then, again, this is a pretty low-level framework, so digging in beyond that is kind of up to you. But you'll see the documentation is pretty good. It's a little strange. There's like these sub hit the major categories over here because these are sub documents. It's not always where you expect things to go. Um, and then you've got all the tutorials documented as well. And then as I mentioned earlier, sometimes there's like these sub ones that you select, which gives you completely different content. So do be aware of that. But there are uh, a lot of code examples here to get you up and running. So if you are looking for a cross-platform rendering, you don't want to deal with the the annoyances or the nuances of dealing with multiple platforms, or frankly, if you've ever done a Hello World in Vulkan and written your 700th line of code, you appreciate a library like Diligent Engine or BGFX. They do a lot of heavy lifting for you. So if you are starting off with low-level graphics programming and you want to learn something like Vulkan, I would actually still recommend starting with something like Diligent Engine or BGFX, getting things working and then rolling your own if you decide it's still worthwhile. So that is it. Uh, that is new, new, um, the newly updated 2.4B version of the Diligent Engine and Apache 2 open source project for doing cross-platform code. And hopefully at least like five or six of you found that interesting. And uh, talk to you all later. Goodbye.